are these people? So as I said earlier, I have to be very careful how I report on this. Um, hopefully YouTube doesn't um, shut this stream down. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. We'll see. Um, but so I'm going to be very careful of how I hopefully um, say things here. But over the weekend, Iran um, made their stand against Israel in response to them bombing their consulate. Mm -hmm. um, Iran, to be very fair, what said to the, to us in the U.S., you're going to say something about this? You're going to condemn um, Israel on this? Because the last we checked, that's a violation of international law, you know. And very possibly, yeah. And the U.S. was just like, "Nope, we ain't." Nope. So nope. Iran gave warning and said, "Okay, well, since you're not saying anything, we are going to we're going to show you what we're capable of." And the and the sad thing, the the interesting thing is, Iran didn't give all they had; they mm. only gave a little bit. So. Yeah, but regardless, sure. over the weekend, Iran did the business. And mm -hmm. I know a lot of people online were, I don't want to say celebrating, but, you know, but people were like, well, you know, as the saying goes, you F around. You find out. You find out. That was so, a firefight! <clears throat> so, so, um, so we'll get into some details. Uh, regarding this. So I will warn you, this will probably be a long segment. I'll try and keep it uh, not so long because you got two other stories that you're going to do tonight. Yeah. So, um, um, so, but, um, oh, but, so we'll, we'll try to speed through it and then we'll stop where need be. Yeah. Uh, again, from Common Dreams, uh, actually, this will be the first of a couple of articles I'm going to be pulling. Um, Jessica Corbett, um, reports Iran launches drone attack against Israel over consulate bombing. Bibi will use it as the pretext for another proclamation because he's bent on starting this war, one writer predicted. So Jessica writes, Iran on Saturday launched several drones and missiles toward Israel in retaliation for the nation's deadly bombing of the Iranian consulate in Syria early this month. God, Colin, I heard it was unprovoked. Isn't it unprovoked? Well, well so, well, I said <laughs> earlier, I just said it in the beginning of this. Yes. <laughs> totally unprovoked, I heard. Right. Mm, safe so and according to friend of, So according to friend of Shelf B, uh, she tweeted, breaking Iran's IRGC confirms launch of dozens of drones and missiles towards occupied territories. And Israeli positions. In response to numerous crimes of the Zionist regime, including the attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus and the martyrdom of a group of our military commanders and advisors in Syria, the Air Force of the R IRGC targeted specific positions inside the occupied territories by firing dozens of missiles and drones. Source Press TV. Um, shout out to Vanessa Bailey, who's been over in Syria forever. And if you're listening, Vanessa, I'll take some of that steel they got in Damascus, the knife, and anything. I'll take that shit. Very happy. You know, that's that good stuff, that Damascus. <laughs> um, so Jessica continues, the United States should avoid taking any military action in connection with the Israel-Iran conflict. Israeli and U.S. officials also confirmed the IRGC launch, estimated by Israel to involve over 100 drones. A short while ago, Iran launched unmanned aerial vehicles from its territory towards the territory of the state of Israel, the IDF said in a statement. The air defense array is on high alert at the same time as the Air Force planes and Navy ships are on a mission to protect the country's skies. The IDF is monitoring all targets, adding the IDF, which had been ranging the war on the Gaza Strip since a Hamas-led attack on Israel October 7th. We ask the public to adhere to and follow the instructions of the Home Front Command and the official IDF announcements regarding the matter. 
Iran's drone launch comes after Iranian officials have reportedly sent a, been sending a message to the Biden administration through back channels. We will attack the forces that attack us, so don't fuck with us and we won't fuck with you. Further fueling fears of a new regional war, U.S. President Joe Biden said Friday, we are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will help defend Israel. So just more of the same shit that they you know the You know the thing. An American defense official said Saturday that U.S. forces in the region continue to shoot down Iranian-launched drones targeting Israel. Our forces remain postured to provide additional defensive support and to protect U.S. forces operating in the region. As the death toll in Gaza has mounted, the Israeli assault, which the International Court of Justice has determined is plausibly genocidal, and you've also, so, also you've not done shit. I mean, it's since, not quite boots on the ground, but they're essentially saying that the U.S. forces are now helping in the war effort, which, I mean, they already were, but now well, actively we reported, shooting down. Well, we reported on this. We reported Iranian on this. equipment, we, yeah. Yeah, but we've reported on this that Israeli troops are there, as well as other ally forces. Are Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. So, <laughs> gotta be careful in saying that. But Yeah, I, I, um, I wish we knew what YouTube thought was disinformation in, in all of this. It just took down a hard lens video and an entire stream from Nick at RDN. Love to know what that's about. You know, if we could have some details, please. But, you know, whatever. Um, the Israeli assault, which the International Court of Justice has determined is plausibly genocidal, has killed at least 33,686 people. Biden has intense, faced intense pressure to, on, to condition or even cut off military aid to Israel. Yeah. In response to Iran's attack on Israel, Sarah Lee Whitson, executive director at Democracy for the Arab World Now, said in a statement that the United States should avoid taking any military action in connection with the Israeli-Iran conflict or further entangle U.S. armed forces in unauthorized and dangerous fighting in the Middle East. The Biden administration should call on Israel to immediately announce a ceasefire in Gaza and to refrain from using U.S. weapons in any further unlawful attacks against other countries' embassies and diplomatic facilities, she added. On top of the nearly $4 billion in military aid that the U.S. gives Israel annually, the Biden administration has been shipping arms to the IDF since October and pushing for a new package worth over $14 billion that requires congressional approval. U.S. House Majority Leader Steve Scalise said Saturday that in light of Iran's unjustified attack on Israel, shut up, the House will move from its previously announced legislative schedule next week to instead consider legislation that supports our ally Israel and holds Iran and its terrorist proxies accountable. Late Saturday, U.S. Senate, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer released a statement commending the Israel and American troops who stopped most of the missiles and drones. We're actually going to talk about that in a few minutes uh, because there's a question of whether that is true condemning Iran's attack and saying that it is even clearer that the best way to help Israel is for the House to quickly pass the Senate's bipartisan national security supplemental next week. Mm. Appearing on Al Jazeera Saturday, Sultan Barak, Barakat, a professor at Hamad bin Khalifa, Khalifa. University, suggested mm. that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu attacked the Iranian consulate to secure more U.S. weapons and try to silence anti-war critics. Um, so if you screw them in, uh, so this is a tweet from Franco Barsetic, yeah. who says, if the below analysis is correct, and I think everyone, anyone observing this war would agree it is, then my fear is that it doesn't matter how limited or restrained Iran's response is. Yanyahu will use it as a pretext for another proclamation because he's bent on starting this war. Um, so actually, if you scroll down yeah. to the actual article, um, so this is what BB hoped to achieve with the attack on the consulate. So mm -hmm. he said the prime minister had the following objectives. Extend the status for war and with it 
the emergency rules that will keep him in power for now, oh, by sure. reminding everyone that Iran will retaliate as a threat. He's also managed to silence the little criticism that has started to come from Washington concerning his operations in Gaza. It's very unlikely that anyone there will say anything against Israel over the coming few days. He's also going to accelerate the delivery of the weapons that Biden has promised, including the critical F-35 fighter jet, jet fighters. Critically, he is also going to silence the opposition within his own country. He will stop the, the, the right of demonstrations on the basis that Israelis are all under the threat of Iran. Interesting. Interesting little tidbit on that one. Yeah. Um, okay. The Council of American Islamic Relations, the nation's largest Muslim civil rights group, argued that the Biden administration emboldened the far-right Israeli government to manufacture this crisis by repeatedly giving it carte blanche to violate international law without any accountability, from murdering journalist Shireen al-Abdul Kaleh to expanding illegal settlements to committing a genocide in Gaza to bombing an Iranian embassy complex in Syria. Um, Sana Saeed, a media critic with AJ+, said on social media Saturday that there will be lots of incoming analysis for the next several hours, but there's really just one thing to know. None of this was inevitably was inevitable, nor did it start with Iran. This is U.S.-Israeli belligerence. This is Joe Biden's foreign policy and Israel's war expansionism as it conducts a genocide. Trita Parsi, an expert of Iran and the Middle East and EVP at the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft, yeah. also weigh in on social media, pointing to a specific example over from over 25 years ago that shows that the Iranian retaliation against Israel perhaps have been evaded. The US, UK, and France prevented the UN Security Council from condemning the Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, despite it being a flagrant violation of international law, Farsi highlighted. The Iranians have hinted that had the US, UNC, UNSC strongly condemned Israel, Iran might have refrained from retaliating against it. So which uh, was why I said earlier, if US well, and if the allied nations had condemned Israel, then had to, you know, yeah. do the do, so to speak. Certainly, the 1998 episode does not prove that Iran's retaliation against Israel today could have been prevented. But it does suggest that there was an opportunity to de-escalate that the UK, US, France ignored or dismissed, he added. Then again, that fits perfectly with Biden's record of the past seven months as opportunity after opportunity to de-escalate and end the war in Gaza has been actively dismissed by him. So, okay. any thoughts before? No, we go I on? mean, I, I, I think that, that the fact that he's using it to like um, stamp down protests and stuff of himself, that's, that's something I haven't heard before. Mm -hmm. So, interesting there, but, yeah, please, continue. I would like to learn yeah. more. So, this is a sub article that Charlton Nuno Marquez, a friend of the show, uh, he had it posted on his own sub -stat. so I was perusing through it, just trying to get more information. I came across this article. Coming to Simplicica. a sub um, newsletter near you. <laughs> So uh, this is a long article. He's definitely a war connoisseur because he gave a lot of information about the missiles that were used. Okay. We don't need to know all that stuff. If you're interested in that, the subtitle mm -hmm. article is linked in the description. Mm -hmm. um, but he does make mention of a few things that are interesting mm. uh, that I will highlight here. Okay. But his article is called Iran Breaches Anglo Zionist Defenses in Historic Attack, a Breakdown. So he writes All right, Iran made history Saturday by launching Operation to Trump Promise. In okay. our usual style here, let's cut through all the noise currently clogging up social networks and then decisively demonstrate the facts as thoroughly as possible, while also pointing out how this was a game changing and historical event 
which has brought Iran onto the world stage in a big way. Yep. Firstly, as establishment, Iran's stated goal for the operation was to strike back at the basis from which the Israeli consular attack was launched on April 1st. Uh, IRGC has listed its objectives for the last night's <laughs> missile attack. Ramon and Never Team air bases, where attack on Iran consulate was conducted from. Israeli Air Force's intelligence HQ in Tel Aviv, where attack on Iran consulate was planned, and the grading of Israel's air defense radars and assets. So essentially, the targets were air bases, essentially. Yeah, uh, Ben Gavir, right? Yeah. Um, um, the footage is of the intelligence HQ gang hit. I've yet to see evidence of 99% interception. Ramon has been badly hit. Neta team has, was hit by more than seven missiles. Air Force Intelligence HQ completely leveled. Other strikes on air defense installations obviously not close to population centers and out of view, but I'm sure sat, sat intel, intel. Saturday's intel, yeah. intel was sure extent of damage. I, I think this is, speaks to, so friend of the show, Fee, has, you know, I've had conversations with her about the paper tiger that is the Israeli military and U.S. military turn. I've also seen it when in regards to the Russian front, right, where essentially warfare has changed to be uh, who can do it the most monetarily effective, right? right? So right. you're talking about the cheaper missiles, the cheaper drones, it, it, like the stuff that's <coughs> easier to produce if it's effective and waste your enemy's money to the tune right. of how much is an iron iron dome armament, right? I'm sure it's a multi million dollar smart thing or whatever that we pay for, right? That's wasting yeah. our money. They're essentially right. siege warfaring the entire continent. So right. you know what? It, 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 it isn't that typical of the U.S. though to spend lots and lots of money by flight. Um, yes. To spend lots and lots of money for subpar work yeah so yeah, yeah a, a, a gonna... hammer in the army cost you you know a hundred dollars or whatever when it could be made for the same thing made for much cheaper cheaper you know? and more effective so, yeah so yeah that's what you're finding out with right. tanks and whatever like as long as it works that's all that matters um so anyway, Never Team Air Base in the south of Occupy Palestine, Ramon Air Base in the south of Occupy Palestine, the Israeli top secret intelligence spy base in Jabal al Sheikh, Mount Ham Herman, 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 Herman in the north of the occupied Golan Heights. It should be noted that the rest of the explosions or hits in other areas of the occupied territories are related to the confrontation of the Israeli air defense systems with the projectiles in the sky, or the falling of the wreckage of the interceptor missiles, or the wreckage of Iranian missiles. Yeah. So, so if you want to take a look at this map... There's the Golan um, Heights. Here's Damascus, yes. right? So this is the first strike, right? right? So, this is not the West Bank right here. This ain't it. Like, here's the West Bank, and like, this little strip over here with Gaza, right? So mm -hmm. Hamas is here, supposedly, allegedly, right? Not over here, I think partially, but right. definitely not up here, right? And we so definitely those are already... The ones that are, are the strikes from Iran that reach the ground. So... Right. So reported explosions in the sky are the black sky. ones. So here, ones. here, here. These are actual the air base, the Arad region, and this other air base. Definitely right. got through. So <coughs> and and we apparently we didn't use hypersonics. Right? That didn't mm -hmm. happen. So Iran still has those. Yeah. Right? It was used in some cluster munition type stuff. Some like pre flak to mess with the Iron Dome. Like, the Iron Dome is not perfect, 
and it's definitely less perfect than 99 percent so right i mean they were actively having to shoot down stuff with aircraft they were sending manned aircraft to fight this mm-hmm. so that's people you you gotta then expend and fuel and more money so as long as Iran can keep chucking some rocks over occasionally, you know, that's going to eat up some funds, and I'm sure then they'll ask us for more money. So, yes. yes. You know. Um, so, so this is from Ashmat X on Twitter, who tweeted, Iran from 1,057.54 miles away, Targeted Israeli Israel's military, military infrastructure located, located in densely populated areas and didn't kill a single civilian. Mm. That means the U.S. and Israel can do the same, but chooses not to. Which we've talked about. We've had Air Force personnel talk about, you know, that they can see inside these buildings. They have more than the capability right. to target properly. And in fact, at some point, Probably next week, I think I'm going to do a story on the Lavender program, right? You heard about this, the uh, Lavender Mm -hmm. AI. This is Israel's AI targeting system, right? Which um, they had a system that was, was, quote, I've heard called the Who's Your Daddy protocol, Where's Daddy protocol, right? I'll explain. So what that was doing was, from my remembering... Um, it was if the father would leave the household, right? That mm. counted as he's Hamas. Then, if he's leaving the house away from the family, not protecting them, right? They would then target the family and the children first, and then you know deal with the father later, mm-hmm. right? Something along those lines. Um. And this is the AI they're using to choose targets in Israel. It's an AI-based system. So computers choosing to do that. And I'm sure that's so Israel can blame it on the, you know, computer and not them. They were just following the computer's orders. Well, you shouldn't have installed fucking Nazi 19 fucking, you know, as your OS. Like, that, that shouldn't have been what you did. But anyway, um, yeah, I'll go into that at some point, probably next week. Okay. So, All right. So now let's get down to the nuts and bolts. This strike was unprecedented for several important reasons. Firstly, it was, of course, the first Iranian strike on Israeli soil directly from Iranian soil itself rather than utilizing proxies from Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, etc. This alone was a big watershed milestone that has opened up all sorts of potentials for escalation. Whoops. Secondly, it was one of the most advanced and longest range peer-to-peer style exchanges in history. Even in Russia, where I've noted we have seen the first ever truly modern near-peer conflict, with unprecedented scenes never before witnessed, like when highly advanced NATO storm shadow missiles flew to Crimea while literally in the same moments, advanced Russian Kybers flew past them in the opposite direction. Such an exchange has never been witnessed before, as we become accustomed to watching NATO pound on weaker unarmed uh, opponents over the last few decades. But no, last night Iran upped the ante even more. Because even in Russia, such exchanges at least happen directly over the Russian border onto its neighbor, where logistics and ISR is, for obvious reasons, much simpler. But Iran did something unprecedented. They conducted the first ever modern, potentially hypersonic, assault on an enemy with SRBMs and MRBMs across a vast vast multi-domain space covering several countries and time zones, and potentially as much as 1,200 to 2,000 kilometers. Additionally, Iran did this all with potentially hypersonic weapons, which peeled back another layer of sophistication that included such things 
such things as possible endo-atmospheric interception attempts with Israeli arrow-free ABM missiles. The U.S. scrambled a large coalition to shoot the threats down, which included the U.S. itself, U.K. flying, over, flying from Cyprus, France, and controversially Jordan, which allowed them to use all of its airspace and even partook in the shootdowns. There are now two chief competing takes on the situation. One says that Iran was humiliated. Uh, this is the Zionist talking point. As Israel intercepted everything, and more importantly, that Iran has loaned its only advantage of surprise and strategic uncertainty slash ambiguity by showing its hand and not achieving much. They argue that Iran's one true advantage over Israel was the threat that it could affect a mass launch of its feared ballistic missiles, wiping out huge swaths at Israel. But now that the perceived damage from the attack was low, Iran yeah. has shown itself to be weaker than expected, which could endue Israel with even more courage and motivation to continue striking and provoking Iran, as they might see they have nothing to fear from Iran's long tooted missiles. This which is I certainly heard a Putin pretty much give them give them credit, I think yesterday or whatever, uh, sometime this week, where it was essentially he was touting their, like, measured response. Um, I think this is the, the quote. <coughs> right. This is certainly a reasonable argument. I'm not saying it's totally wrong. We simply don't know for a fact because of the affirmation reasons that, one, we don't actually know how much damage the strikes cause due to Israel's obvious lies of 100% interceptions and disproved fakes. Two, we don't know whether it was merely Iran's goal to do a light showing in the interest of escalation management, i.e., they may not have wanted to cause too much damage deliberately simply to send a message, but to keep from provoking Israel to respond too aggressively. Iran is said to have thousands of such missiles, so obviously having launched only 70 plus or so is likely not indica indicative of a major attack task with actual causing serious destruction to Israeli infrastructure. Then there's a converse side. Iran came out the big winner by demonstrating the all, the, all the previously outlined abilities of bypassing the West's densest AD shields. Here's why I think in some ways this conclusion to be the more correct in the long term. First, one of the common counter arguments is that Israel possesses nuclear weapons, which ultimately trumps anything Iran can throw at them. But in reality, now that Iran has proven the ability to penetrate Israel, Iran too can cause nuclear devastation by striking the Israeli Daimona nuclear power plant. Destroying nuclear plants would produce far much more radioactive chaos than a relatively clean modern nuclear weapons. Uh, furthermore, Israel okay. furthermore, Israel is, furthermore, Israel is much smaller than the comparatively giant Iran. Iran can take many nuclear hits and survive, but a single mass nuclear event in Israel could eradicate the entire country, making it uninhabitable. Oh, God. That's bad, Colin. <laughs> that's like more than bad. Right. That's that's talk of what from uh I've heard from Tara when she was working as a congressional aide that they were talking about things like a um what what was the phrasing? Uh you know, the tactical use of nukes, a, a limited nuclear war. Right? Mm -hmm. There is no such thing. Right. Like, so, the fact that Israel in any way is thinking that that's a problem is not good. Right. That's that Armageddon clock getting, getting closer. So, mm -hmm. that's, that's bad. Ugh. Okay. Um, Secondly, recall the main fear of Iraqi scarabs and suds back in the day. 
that they could contain chemical biological warheads. Iran, too, could technically load its missiles with all kinds of nasty goodies of this sort, either chembio, even enriched uranium, which has a plenty to create a dirty bomb. Now that we know it can penetrate Israel easily, Iran could actually wipe out the country with a mass unenriched nuclear, chemical, or biological attack with these now proven hyper or quasi hypersonic ballistics. Uh -huh. That threat alone now presents a psychological dem Democles sword that Damocles. will act as Damocles, yeah, that will Greek. act as an asymmetrical deterrent or counter to any Israel Israeli Samson option threat. Yeah. Thirdly, this was Iran's very first foray into a direct strike. It can be argued that they gained critical data and metrics from the entire Western alliance's defensive capabilities, as well as Israeli defensive vulnerabilities. That mean, this means that there is an implied threat that any future attack of this scale could be far more effective, as Iran may now calibrate said attack to maximize what, what it saw were any failings or weaknesses on its part on Saturday. Russia has had two years of launching such strikes, and it has only been semi-recently that, that they've collaborated and fine-tuned the precise timings of the sophisticated multi-layered drone ALCM ballistic triple threat attack. Yeah. Iran can improve with each iteration as well as maximize, streamline the effectiveness which to each attempt. Yep. Um, fourthly, there's a now confirmed mass discrepancy of operational costs. So this is from, if you zoom in, please, from OSINT Defender, who tweeted, Israel defense of Saturday's Iranian missile and drone attack is estimated to have costed over $1.3 billion in jet fuel, service-to-air missile interceptors, air-to-air -air missiles, and other military equipment that was utilized by Israeli air defense array, with an hour-free hypersonic ballist anti-ballistic missile alone, believed to cost between five to twenty million. Okay, just in so, one in one night in night. one night, five to twenty million dollars. Right, one point three billion in jet fuel alone in one night. Like I was saying earlier. Yeah, like this is. They're trying to, like, you know, wait them out and see if they run out. Right. And then they're going to ask us for more money, and we're already upset that they're asking for money. More. Right. So Ukraine is all over again, basically. Yes. Yeah, but more so now. Right. You know. <clears throat> okay. And, and now we're wanting to sanction them. Right. Economically. Like, we think that's right. going to help. We're right. spending way more than we're ever going to sanction them, like, away from. They will still make money, money without is, us. This is what your money is going to, folks. <laughs> oh, God. Yep. One confirmed source claimed Iran's attack cost as little as $30 million, while the yeah. number floated for the West interceptions is around $1 billion to $1.3 so that's a lot more than 30 million i know it's right. i know it's just one zero to you people but that's over three times the amount and right. 30 million so, is a lot of dollars right already so in layman's terms iran barely showed what they're capable of with less with less so <laughs> oh dude that's and this is a conservative so estimate of right. course it is. So basically, so basically, Israel, do you want to do the dance? Do you want that dance? <laughs> it doesn't sound like that they wanted to escalate things from what I heard. So doesn't mean they won't. Right. Let's, we'll see. The point is that just that we're in the midst of the Houthis having proven the West's total inability to sustain defense against mass persistent drone swarms, uh -huh. here to Iran they have just proven an absolutely lethal inability of Israel and the West to sustain against a potential long drawn out Iranian strike campaign, i.e. one prosecuted over the course of days or weeks 
with consistent ma daily mass barrages. Such a yep. campaign would likely critically deplete the West's ability to shoot down even the lowest scale Shahid drone threat. Just look at Ukraine. It's going through the same lesson as we speak. Bro, what did I talk about? Have we talked about drone swarms before on the show? Yes. Welcome to the arms oh, yeah. race. Welcome <laughs> to the arms race. That's what we're doing. That's what all of this is. So, fun. Lastly, what does this mean? One neglected consequence of this is that Iran now stands to feel the ability to total disrupt Israeli's economic way of life. If Iran were to engage in a committed campaign of mass strikes, it could totally paralyze the Israeli economy by making entire areas uninhabitable, causing mass immigrations in the same way the Hamas attack led to thousands of Israelis to flee. Unlike Israel's barbaric and savage genocide aimed primarily at civilians, last night's Iranian attack exclusively targeted is military sites. But if Iran wanted to, they can launch mass infrastructure attacks in the way Russia has now down to Ukraine's energy grids, further compounding the economic damage. In short, Iran can mire Israel in months and years long economic malaise or outright devastation. Yep. Um, of course, at that point, the question of the U.S. coming to help is brought up, but clearly, desperate for an off-ramp, Biden stated, um, so this was from Axios, um, where Biden told BB U.S. won't support an Israeli counterattack on Iran. Yay. Um, President Biden told Israeli Prime Minister BB during a call on Saturday that the U.S. won't support any Israeli counterattack against Iran, a senior White House official told Axios. So, U.S. knows what's up, at least for now. Mm -hmm. The final aspect of consideration is to remember that all of the preceding and ensuing events could very well be part of the Israeli plan. Recall, Israel, Israel didn't choose to blow up the Iranian embassy, a huge, unprecedented maneuver, and slaughter Iranian generals just for its health. Allegedly. This appeared to Allegedly. This appeared part of a clear strategy of escalation aimed at baiting Iran into an escalatory spiral, presumably with the end goal of drawing the U.S. into a large-scale war to cut down Iran once and for all. In light of that, some experts now speculate that Iran foolishly fell into the trap. However, as stated earlier, Iran can be said to have wisely managed the escalation for precisely this reason, to show its strength while not going too far in a way that would invite a wilder American response, or an even an Israeli one for that matter. Um, why now? Why did Israel bait Iran into an action at this precise moment? The clue to the answer lies in the news from several days ago that is Israel totally withdrew its forces from Khan Yunus. Yeah. So if you zoom in, uh, Israel withdraws from Khan Yunus as Gaza hits six month mark. Actually, you can zoom out. Uh, so they withdrew. I suspect that Israel, or Bibi for that matter, in particular, is facing failure after not having accomplished any of the stated objectives, and thus is desperate to create a new distraction as a vector for continuing the war in some way that can keep the world and Israelis from reaching the conclusion that the war has been totally lost. Mm. Um, have you seen this latest bombshell from Haratz? We've oh, lost. Yeah. Truth must be told. The inability to admit it in encapsulates everything you need to know about Israel's individual and mass psychology. There's a clear, sharp, predictable reality that we should begin to fathom, to process, to understand, and to draw conclusions from for the future. It's no fun to admit that we lost, so we lie to ourselves. Some of us maliciously lie, others innocently. It would be better to find solace in some airy carb with a total victory crust. But it might be just a bagel. When the solace ends, the whole remains. There's no way around it. The good guys don't always win. The astonishing article, which jibes with the sentiments of many Israelis, goes on. After half a year, we could have been in a totally different place, 
but be being held hostage by the worst leadership in the country's history and a decent contender for the title of worst leadership anywhere ever. Mm-hmm. Every military undertaking is supposed to have a diplomatic exit. The military action should lead to a better diplomatic reality. Israel has no diplomatic exit. The article concludes that the calculus has changed and that Israelis may now never be able to return to the northern border given the situation with Hezbollah. That sounds a lot like blaming Bibi, what it sounds like. Well, um, in short, this is why Bibi needs an escalation. It's to divert attention from the ongoing catastro- catastrophe of Israel's potential defeat to Hamas, the catastrophic loss of standing of Israel's image to the world community, the complete turning against Israel by the entire world. Rather than admit defeat and face the end of his career, as well as the coming trials and tribunals that will put him in jail, he chose to take the only remaining option, to continue escalating in the hopes that a wide scale war could wash away his sins and undo his past mistakes. Unfortunately, just like the ill-fated Zelensky, Netanyahu's doomed plan appears destined to coincide with the U.S.'s historic decline, reaching a zenith now in its pivotal year of 2024. Yay. So, I have one more article with from Caitlin, but anything you want to add nope. before we end this? I've been adding it when I, when I see it, pretty much. All right. So, um, so I wanted to bring this to uh, friend Caitlin. Uh, has a slight different take compared to Simplicicus from his article. Um, but she writes, Israel's latest lie is that it has no choice but to attack Iran. Mm-hmm. Oh, went backwards. All right. In an article titled, Israel Vows to Retaliate Against Iran from Missile Attacks, Axios reports that the Israeli defense minister has informed his American power that Israel has no choice but to attack Iran for the retaliatory, retaliatory strike it launched in response to Israel's deadly attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus. Israel, Israeli Minister of Defense Yov, is that how you say it? Yov Galant, yeah. Yov Galant. So, Defense Secretary Lord Austin Sunday that Israel has no choice but to respond to the unprecedented missile and drone attack launched by Iran over the weekend, reports Axios, signing yeah. an anonymous U.S. official and other unnamed source. The state of Israel has been churning out massive lies on a daily basis for the last six months, but this whopper could wind up being the most consequential. Obviously, Israel has a choice as to whether it continues to escalate a conflict it initiated with an extreme act of aggression. This fraudulent apartheid ethnic state is so accustomed to crying victim every minute of every day that it will even pretend to be the victim of its own conscious decisions. As Professor Jason Hickel put it on Twitter, people need to understand that Israel does not need to retaliate. Iran's action was a telegraphed response to Israel's bombing of its consulate, which killed 16 people and violated the Geneva Convention. Geneva mm-hmm. Convention. Iran says they're now considering the matter closed. The Israel must de-escalate. By the way, not the Geneva, the, the Vienna Convention. Yeah, not yes. <laughs> yeah, no worries. It Iran, makes sense. Probably did the Geneva Convention too, honestly. Right. If we're going to talk. So, you know. Iran's Deputy Foreign Minister Ali Bagari has made it clear that if Israel launches an against Iran, this time Iran's response will be instantaneous instead of a 12 day grace period with Tehran giving neighboring countries and the United States a 72 hour advance warning. warning to ensure minimal damage to Israel. See, that's what people I think are not necessarily talking about. Yeah. We knew that this was happening. Of course so um so the idea that it was provoked allegedly yeah. is bullshit. Because if it were unprovoked, they would have just done it immediately or probably within the following day but they did this within a week and a half of the attack okay. so 
Predictably, the Biden administration is doing its usual phony stick where it pretends to be a passive witness to all this, with National Security Spokesperson John Kirby telling the press that the White House plans to just wait and see what the Israelis decide to do. But as foreign policy analyst Tariq Kenny Shawa noted of Kirby's statement, Israel will be using U.S. supply weapons, will have to coordinate with U.S. forces throughout the region, and will depend on the U.S. for missile defense when Iran responds. So the fact that the U.S. won't be actively planning the attack with Israel doesn't mean the U.S. won't be involved in it on a fundamental level. <clears throat> if Israel's escalatory attack happens, it will be because Washington allowed it to. If the U.S. informed Israel that it will instantly lose its pricey U.S. weapon supplies and Pentagon support if it attacks Iran, Israel would discover very quickly that it does in fact have a choice as to whether or not to proceed. Um, so this is from Trisha Parsi. My latest for at foreign policy on Iran, Gaza, and Israel. Biden's support for Israel is often described as a continuation of a long-standing U.S. policy. In reality, it is a break with tradition. Previous presidents regularly twisted Israel's arm, if needed, and we've talked about this before. Um, in an article of foreign policy titled, Netanyahu Wants War with Iran, Biden Can Prevent It, Quincy Institute Parsi argues that while Biden's unconditional support for Israel is often described as a continuation of long-standing U.S. policy, it has actually been a rather dramatic break from the norm. Presidents like Reagan, both Bushes, and Obama have not hesitated to give Israel's arm a twist whenever they found it necessary to advance U.S. interests in the region. This new policy of just letting Tel Aviv do whatever it wants while providing unconditional support is actually without precedent in the White House. So again, Thanks, that's Obama. something. Yeah, so that's also something that is not necessarily talked about. And we've talked about it on Reagan. Yeah. Well, we more specifically, Reagan has set has resolved in not giving conditions um, in certain instances with Israel in order to go too far and by and I wonder if honestly in thinking about this now, I wonder if that has to do with the amount that APAC has given Biden. That would be kind of interesting to kind of see. Um maybe in comparison to the other presidents. Mm -hmm. Um I think Biden has gotten what, like four million from them? Something like that. So it'll be interesting if anyone knows in the chat like how much the other presidents have gotten as far as funding from APAC. This might explain why Biden has actually been just like whatever, let Israel do whatever. Yeah. Um, but but we've talked about on the show how even I don't think necessarily Obama, but even Obama, I don't think he particularly liked Yanyahu really. So yeah. Um. So it so it was easy for him to kind of be like no in certain instances, but. Right. But anyway, <clears throat> both Israel and the U.S. are pretending to be powerless in this situation when in reality they're both anything but. They're like two muggers getting ready to mug someone and saying, if only there was something we can do to stop this terrible mugging. <laughs> Israel, Israel yep. absolutely can choose not to accelerate towards a terrifying war between extremely powerful militaries and the U.S. can absolutely can choose to pump the brakes. The fact is that the fact that neither of them are doing so is just what it looks like when you live under a globe sparring spanning empire that's fueled by human blood. So, so we'll see what happens. But you know, essentially it would be to Israel's demise and by us by extension, yeah. if we bait Iran more because as I said Iran was able to do a lot with less and they didn't even pull out all the stops so imagine what Iran could possibly do with the tactical advantage that they allegedly have that they can knock out Israel completely yeah. and by extension the West and more specifically us 
in terms of the amount of money that we spend in order to try and keep up with Iran, and we right. can't. So, um, we'll see what happens, but you know, um, but right now the fact that the U.S. is kind of being like, you know, we we ain't touching that kind of is promising, but how long that's going to last, we don't know. Depending, it, it pretty much will be up to Yan Yahu what he tries to do. But yeah. I wonder if this might be the beginning of the end of Israel in terms of this actually might be the catalyst for um, for there to be conditions given the amount of money that we would have to spend in order to you know, just at least break even with Iran as far as military might, but but then again, the U.S. has been known to do sh stupid shit anyway, so, you know, anything to start a war, so who knows. Yep. Well, hopefully YouTube doesn't want to go to war with us uh, and take this video down. You know, it's already first striked us with a demonetization, so you can always go to code.com slash news network if you want to fight back against that. You know, scan the QR code on your screen, put exclamation mark, donate in the chat. Keep the chat to us. But always very nice. If you can't give monetarily, <coughs> very easy. Hit the like and subscribe button, share, leave a comment, do all those engagement things you gotta do. Um, 